שלום לכולם, קוראים לי דוב בן יעקב קרצמן, אני מ-CBS uh, in Israel, Contextual Behavioral Science in Israel, ואיתי היום דוקטור תום סבו, הוא מארצות הברית, והוא בא לארץ בקיץ לפתוח את הבוטקאמפ הראשון של Acceptance and Commitment Therapy. עכשיו, מה זה Acceptance and Commitment Therapy, או בעברית, טיפול בקבלה ומחויבות. והדבר הזה מסייע לאדם, באמת לא רק למטופל, אבל לכל אדם, לפעול בהתאם למה שחשוב לו. אז אני מציג עכשיו את דוקטור תום סבו, והוא יסביר לנו בדיוק במה הוא מתמצא ומה הוא הולך לעשות בקיץ בישראל בין 24 ליולי עד 29 ליולי, אז 24, 25, 28 ו-29 ביולי בתל אביב. הלו, דוקטור תום סבו, and welcome to CBS in Israel uh, interview. It's great to have you on our show. Hello, Shalom. Sorry that I can't speak any more Hebrew than that. Well, that's a great start. Wonderful to have you here. And I've just explained to our audience that in the summer, in July, we'll, we will be having the first ever acceptance and commitment therapy boot camp. Now, um, this is not a trivial matter. I didn't realize until we... Uh, Karine started organizing this, that um, a boot camp is actually a, uh, a protected term, at least in America. And so we had to have special permission from um, Professor Stephen Hayes and um, Praxis to use that name. And we got it, and we we're very happy to get it. Um, but what I'd like to ask you is, what is... An acceptance and commitment therapy good camp. So you're absolutely right. It's trademarked in the United States. It's not trademarked in, in Israel. So if Israel, if you wanted to use the word boot camp without permission from contextual science uh, dot org, you could have. But I thought it was a really cool idea to bring in Steve and to bring in Praxis and to say, hey, we were we would like to do this. By the way, it's contextual change limited is the company that trademarks the name boot camp. Bootcamp in the United States is a term that's used to describe uh, intensive physical training. And it is used by lots of different kinds of organizations that do training. We use it as a way of describing, this is four days of really intensive immersion into the model of acceptance and commitment change. And it really is a model. It's a model of how behavior change can happen inside of an individual's life, such that they are able to meet life's challenges with a tremendous amount of resilience and uh, with the capacity to be in the flow of the moment and flourish with their decisions that they make in the future. Right, so it sounds, first of all, fascinating. Now, I understand that you are a faculty member in the hybrid master's degree program for professional behavioral analysis at the Florida Institute of Technology. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Right, and um, that is quite a mouthful. What I am drawn to is the fact that you studied yourself under... Um, Stephen C. Hayes and Larry Williams at Reno University in Nevada. Um, and I take it that's where maybe you were first introduced to acceptance and commitment therapy, or was it not? Now, you know, uh, actually have been born at North Carolina where Steve started his professional career, but he brought it with him to the University of Nevada, Reno. And Reno has kind of been the, the epicenter of the philosophy of science, the experimental analysis of human behavior, which is the basic science undergirding of acceptance and commitment therapy. And it's also the epicenter of the, uh, of the, the 
the therapy modality act, as we call it. Right. And I, I didn't discover it when I was in grad school. I was looking for a graduate school mentor and reading through all the behavioral journals. And I came across Steve's writing. And I came across the writing of his then wife, Linda. Linda Hayes and Steve Hayes were doing things that were really stretching the boundaries of behavior science. They were on the frontiers of what was really an approach that to me spoke to our capacity to solve real human problems. I had been drawn to behavior analysis. There was just a click for me in this approach to psychology. But ACT offered something even more. And to me, it resonated because I have a background in doing outdoor adventure programming and experiential learning. So the idea of taking a metaphor that somebody uses in their speech and physicalizing it in order to help them open up and really show up with fullness inside of their lives completely resonated for me. I knew I wanted to pursue that. And so I made the effort to get the background so that when I applied to UNR, I'd be competitive and I'd get in. And then I approached Steve and I said, listen, I have this background in outdoor adventure therapy. I'm a rock climber and I've been involved in training people in the wilderness for many years. And I think I could make use of that background in a way that nobody has done yet with ACT. And he said, yeah, cool. Come on in and do it. And that's wow. what I did. That's amazing. Now, we are going to be spending four days with you on this boot camp in the summer in Israel. What, what, what are we going to expect? What, what are we going to be doing for those four days? Oh my God. I'd like to ask you, just before you answer that, I mean, who is going to be, who's the, who, who are the audience that you think should be there? Who are the participants? Where do you expect them to be coming from? So it, it is a four-day intensive training. And, and, you know, we start early in the morning and we go as long as the venue will allow us to go. And as soon as they kick us out, we, we leave. But then we come back first thing in the morning again. And, and it, there is plenty of time in four days to get your feet wet, to practice using these principles. This is a, a counterintuitive approach. So in most approaches to psychological and psychosocial help, the therapist tries to help a person get rid of problems. And in the ACT approach, what we're trying to do is help people to invite their problems in and have their problems be present as they move towards things that they truly deeply care about and take action with respect to those things that they care about. So getting comfortable moving inside of that model takes a little bit of practice. So lots and lots of time inside a boot camp is spent practicing doing exactly that because as i said especially if you come from a traditional psychodynamic background or cbt background most of your efforts have been most of your training has been focused on learning how to help people minimize their problems make them smaller and here we're not trying to do that we're trying to just kind of see the problems as what they are for what they are and allow, not allow them to take up any more space than that. Uh, Dove, I'm going to show a diagram that answers the second part of your question, which is right. who all ought to be here. If you are working with human beings in any capacity and you have an influence over people's lives, and you have an interest in helping people to be more effective in their lives, come. Come. Because the ACT model is really a model of psychological flexibility, a model of helping people to flourish and be more resilient inside of their lives. There are a number of different disciplines that make use of ACT that are inside of graduate training, people are learning how to do talk therapy, how to do psychotherapy, 
So the clinical social workers, clinical nurses, clinical psychologists, school psychologists all learn how to use psychotherapy inside of their practices. And uh, they're more than welcome to take act and uh, use it in that direction. All of the butterfly wings on the left-hand side of this Venn diagram are professions that make use of talk therapy or psychotherapy. On the left-hand side of this Venn diagram are a number of professions that are aimed at helping people to be more effective, but expressly do not do psychotherapy. Safety consultants, coaches, school coaches, and applied behavior analysts typically do not do talk therapy, and yet they're in the business of helping people to be more effective in their lives. And they too can make use of the psychological flexibility model. It's still act. It's just act without, with a very different focus. And each one of these different disciplines might, through their professional training and credentialing, licensure and certification, have different scopes of practice in each any individual who's working as a clinical psych psychologist should stay within their scope of practice, and anybody who's a clinical social worker should work and make use of the ACT model inside of their scope of practice. If you're a coach, you can also make use of the ACT model within your scope of practice. Same thing goes for the applied behavior analysts. But I think this gives you kind of a broad overview of all the different kinds of professions, and there's probably six more that I didn't add to this model, but they would give you a sense for who might benefit and who might be able to make use of the training that you get in boot camp to enhance what you do in your field. Wow, that was a very clear explanation. And basically what I'm getting from that is that ACT is a model that can actually fit in and be an added benefit to your existing mythology or model that you use, whether it's talk therapy or not, and this can actually enhance, if you like, um, your uh, relationship with your client. Yeah, I think so. And I think that it's also the case on top of what you just said, that you could dive in a little deeper and make use of the, uh, the underlying philosophy of science and really fit whatever else you do inside of it. So it could go either way. And this, of course, is an is a evidence-based model. 30 years, 35 years of uh, randomized controlled trials, and now we're developing single case design studies also, which are much more precise, much more fine-grained, and help to uncover precise functional relations between the interventions inside of that and changes in behavior that we're looking for. So literally, over 400 studies that I'm aware of that are well designed that provide the evidence base upon which this has a process based transdiagnostic approach to helping people with psychological problems move forward in their lives. Well, let me unpack that just a little bit. When I say process based, what we're interested in is we're interested in uncovering the underlying behavioral repertoires or psychological processes that are involved in what it takes to show up inside of your life, be aware of what's going on and be open to what's going on and still do what you value, act with respect to what you most deeply care about. So what are some of those underlying processes? One of them might be being able to look at your thoughts and listen to your thoughts and recognize, oh, wow, that's a thought. Just because I have the thought doesn't mean that that's what's so in the world. I've had a thought that, uh, that Dove is a cool guy. I don't really know that Dove is a cool guy. But it might be cool for me to get to know him because I have this thought, right? Another one of those basic processes that we're looking at in ACT is recognizing that all human emotions are evolutionarily adapting us to be successful in the world, not just the pleasant ones. So there's joy and excitement, anticipation and rapture and fulfillment and satisfaction. Those are all pleasant to have, but then there's also anxiety and disappointment and fear and 
discomfort and uh, revulsion, those two are helpful. We try and push those away. But inside of the ACT model, we encourage people to be willing to have those emotions too and to just sit with them. Let them be present as you also come into the present moment. Look at yourself in a flexible way and take stock in what you most deeply cherish in the world and set out on a course of action to fulfill that mission, whatever you most deeply care about. Those are some of the psychological processes or underlying behavioral repertoires that we're aiming at next. Now, the second part that I said I would unpack, like there's a process-based approach, and it's also a transdiagnostic approach. A lot of psychological approaches aim at being focused on people with uh, borderline personality disorder or aim at being focused on trauma survivors or aim at being focused on people with anxiety issues. And ACT has demonstrated a strong evidence-based capacity to help people with all of these different problems and people who don't have psychological problems but who are the worried well or just plain doing well and are looking to improve their way of negotiating life's challenges. So we call it a transdiagnostic approach as opposed to being one that's focused on one diagnosis within the DSM-5. Okay, Tom, so I'm getting this boot camp is going to be very useful and it's evidence-based and it's experiential, which will be a, 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 a challenge in itself. But what I want to ask you is, is there any fun going on during those four, four days? Yeah, so what I would recommend is that if you're coming to boot camp, come in a comfortable pair of pants, come in a pair of sneakers, come in a t-shirt. Uh, please don't come wearing a a stuffy shirt and a tie and a jacket, anything that you're, cause, cause my approach to act is pretty physical. So I'm really gonna be inviting people to get up and move. Like you know, there's times when we're just gonna sit and we're gonna talk and maybe we're gonna cry and maybe we're gonna laugh, but other times we're gonna get up and move. And invariably you're gonna be showing your teeth and you're gonna be laughing your eyes out. This is part of what happens as you, take aversive events from life and really oh, wow. sit with them and allow those functions, those aversive functions to transform into something different, something with meaning, something with purpose, something with fun, something with play. So there's going to be a lot of laughter. There may be a lot of tears too. There's going to be a lot of movement. There's going to be a lot of twisting and turning and saying, what did he just say? And why does he want me to be uncomfortable? And it's going to be confusing and uh, you're going to have a good time. Wow. Well, so it's going to be an fun experience going on here. We're running out of time now. So one last question I want to ask you. I understand that you've never been to Israel before. Um, and I always love talking to people who are coming to Israel for the first time. Um, so I'm going to ask you now, and then I'll ask you again after you arrive. What are your expectations? What is it about Israel that you're looking forward to, to experiencing or seeing? You know, uh, uh, I am Jewish by birth, uh, so I feel like I have some heritage to explore in, uh, in Israel. And uh, it is the, the home of so much rich diversity in culture and in uh, lifestyle choices that I really want to get to know. Uh, I've also uh, been really, really excited by uh, this guy, Ravi Dov Ben Yaakov that I've been hearing about and I want to get to know him a little bit and uh, Kaleem Stern who is a applied behavior analyst who is a tremendous leader and I want to spend some time with her and uh, I'm a rock climber and I want to check out the rock climbing in a new part of the world that I haven't been to so a lot of things I want to do. It sounds amazing. Anyone that's a rock climber listening to this, get in touch with either me or um, Karen and we'll set you up when you come over. Dr. Tom Sabo, it's an absolute pleasure talking to you. I'm very excited about meeting you in the summer and um, working with you and learning from you. 
and experiencing alongside you. Thank you very much for joining me in this interview and I look forward to seeing you soon and keep well. Feelings mutual. Looking forward to it. See you soon, Doug. Bye for now. Shalom. Shalom.